Thanks for joining us today to celebrate an historic event that some say signaled the birth of our Army. It's an honor to host this event here at Fort McNair and as the commander of the Military District of Washington, it is indeed my distinct honor. During the Civil War, Washington, D.C. was the most heavily defended city in the world. It was surrounded by 70 forts with 1,000 pieces of artillery and a garrison of upwards of 40,000 soldiers. Just across the river to my rear, Fort Myer traces its heritage back to the building of Fort Cass in August of 1861 and Fort Whipple in May of 1863. It is the only Civil War fort from the defenses of Washington to still be serving in its dual role of security and ceremony as part of Joint Force Headquarters National Capital Region and the U.S. Army's Military District of Washington, today's guardians of the Capitol. Major General McClellan held the grand review for President Lincoln along today's Route 7 between Munson's Hill in the west and the current Nova in the east. He understood the significance of the size of the review and what it would mean to the spectators that were in attendance. In all, some 70,000 soldiers organized into seven divisions and 100 regiments took part in the review. What a spectacle. By holding the Grand Review, General McClellan wanted the Army to see how far it had come since Bull Run. He wanted to show the Army to the citizens of Washington, many tens of thousands who came out to watch the 10-hour parade. President Lincoln wanted to show it off to the Foreign Diplomatic Corps as well, especially England and France who favored the Confederacy, to let them know that the Union government was serious in developing a modern army for victory. And our army continues to be victorious today. Today's army is as it was during the Grand Review. Proud, committed, trained, and ready to do the nation's bidding. Again, thank you for attending today's historic ceremony. It's my honor to host this event, Army Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the Joint Base Commander for Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall, Colonel Carl Kaufman. President Lincoln, General Lennington, General Williams, Mr. Bars, all of our distinguished guests here on Fort McNair today. We're delighted to have you here on historic Fort McNair. Founded in 1791 and therefore the third oldest Army post in the United States. During the war years of 1861 to 1865, President Lincoln often visited to check out the latest in weapons technology. The area in front of the officers club is where the summer of 1861, Mr. Lincoln test fired the first machine gun in history. He would stop by building 21, the model arsenal, to check on the various models of weapons technology. That building still stands next to the officers club parking lot directly behind the parade participants on the third floor of the tan building is where the trial of the assassinations took place in the summer of 1865. Right there to your right. You are walking in the footsteps of history. The Battle of Bull Run, located some 25 miles west of Washington, took place 150 years ago this past July. The Confederate victory there in the fall of 1861 brought Confederate forces to within six miles of the White House. President Lincoln would climb to the roof of the White House. Looking through an Army Signal Corps telescope, he could see the large Confederate stars and bars flying atop the Fort Munson's Hill at the western end of Bailey's Crossroads. In late October of 1861, the Confederates retired to winter camps at Fairfax Courthouse in Centerville. The Union Army under General George McClellan advanced to Munson's Hill and made it a Union fort. Stretching eastwards from Munson's Hill along today's Route 7 lay a 200-acre plateau that would provide the physical location for the Grand Review. Then on November 20th, 1861, some 70,000 American soldiers proceeded to be reviewed by President Lincoln and George McClellan. There were 100 regiments of infantry, seven regiments of cavalry, 120 pieces of artillery that participated in that review.
Harper's Weekly newspaper summed up the Graham Review in three words, brilliant beyond description. Colonel Newton Cordes of the 16th New York wrote his family, this was a proud day for the Army of the Potomac. President Lincoln now saw the raw regiments which had passed before him on their arrival at the Capitol, transformed into a drilled and disciplined army. He watched them march by with firm and unbroken cadence, with the barren and dignified deportment of men schooled in the profession of arms. A foreign observer, the Count of Paris, wrote in his diary, when I compare them to how they were when we arrived two months ago, I have to admit that I was not expecting such fast progress. The advantage of such a large review is to show that each division is surrounded by others who are there to help. Colonel Bill Averill, commander of the 3rd Pennsylvania Cavalry, wrote, those who had visited its busy camps and attended the inspections and reviews of divisions had formed no, had formed no adequate conception of the Army as a whole. But on the day of the grand review at Bailey's Crossroads, the eyes of all spectators and even the Army itself were suddenly opened. In realization of all observers, even the most experienced officers, the Army was born that day. A civilian who, intend, who attended the review, the noted poet, Juliet Ward Howe of Massachusetts, was so inspired by it that upon returning to the Willard Hotel in Washington, she put pencil to paper and wrote the immortal Battle Hymn of the Republic. As it has always been and always shall be, the strength of our nation is our army, the strength of our army is our soldiers, the strength of our soldiers is our families, and that what makes us army strong. Oh!